How do you guys like this format? I'm testing out StreamYard. If you're just now watching this, I'm testing out StreamYard. Um, I've been having trouble with uh, Zoom. It won't connect to my fan page for whatever reason. How is this going? Is this going good? You guys liking this? Uh, Francine, can you address the people that are still calling this a hoax or political? Man, you just can't help some people. Some people, Francine, some people are just going to die. The herd is just going to thin out. All right, here's a question. Wow. Will the second wave be as bad as this one? No, it should not be as bad just because by then we'll have a little bit of immunity. Some people will, be, will have been exposed. We will have an antibody test by then, which means we will know whether or not you are immune to to the coronavirus, this particular strain of coronavirus. Um, and then we'll go from uh, there. Oh, here's my girl, Coach Nisha. Hello, badass. Hello to you, badass. Hope you're doing good. CJ Thor, man, I love all the compliments. Thank you. Yeah, I think you have a darling personality. I don't know you, but I hope to know you someday. Um, yeah, here we go. Never heard of StreamYard, but seems to be fine. Audio is awesome. Thank you, man. So. Yeah, I was trying when I had um, Dr. Gordon, who was the New York surgeon taking care of COVID patients on like I could not connect my Zoom to my fan page. And and I, I thought I had a cap of a thousand people on my Zoom. I have a cap of a hundred. So I told people to go to my Zoom page and watch it there. And it was it was only a hundred people and people didn't get to watch her. And it was an amazing interview. It was a lot of fun. So then the next morning I got my ass up really early because she's in Eastern time. And uh, I was on her broadcast and she did it through StreamYard. StreamYard, she's like, it's amazing. Also, oh, come on now. You know I'm nice in nurses, Picotine. You know, I'm a, this is my real personality. It's not like I'm not, I'm not lying here. Amy, when do you think it'll be back to work for non-essential businesses? Oh man, long time, girl. We're gonna roll out in stages. So maybe May for some of the essential businesses and um, et cetera. How long before elective surgeries are back on? This is a good question, Kimberly. How you guys like this format? Get your question up right up here on screen. Um, you know, I think this is pretty cool. I'm liking this. So now you're not having to stroll through all the comments. This is pretty cool. Maybe this will put some of the trolls up. I want a troll to come on so I can I can put his question up there and we just beat the shit, shit out of him. Which goes back to my other question about, are you nice to nurses? Yes, I'm nice to my, I used to be nice to nurses. I retired and good. Love it. Works great. Works great. Awesome. That's awesome. Good. So elective surgeries are back on. This is a good question, Kimberly, because basically what we have to figure out is, um, I said I was just testing StreamYard. Now I'm just totally doing a whole broadcast <laughs> because, um, we we have we don't completely understand the risks of the operating room in terms of COVID, right? So we are concerned that the laparoscopic surgeries can cause aerosolization of the virus. So aerosolization means the virus is actually floating in the air, not in droplets, but the virus itself is in the air, or maybe micro droplets, many many micro micro droplets, which would probably be um, smaller than the N95 masks. And then also for the surgeons, is it worth it? The risk also, it's kind of, it's really uncomfortable operating with these huge gowns. They were doing emergency cases um, dressed up like orthopedic surgeons, which for orthopedic surgeons, they're used to it. But for regular surgeons, laparoscopic surgeons, we're not used to it. Bariatric surgeons, we're not used to gowning up like that. Um, which makes it technically kind of diff difficult, very different, and you get hot. And then our poor anesthesiologist, remember when the anesthesiologist, if you ever had surgery, when they intubate you, they have to put the scope, um, they're right up. Like sometimes they're like eyeball them, like they're right up next to your mouth. And so that's where the COVID, the virus is just oh, exhaling right there. And they have to put that anesthesia tube in there. So there's a question about um, what sort of exposure anesthesiologists have, both when you're intubating you and then when they're extubating you. And then also what they have found in Europe, for sure in Europe, and this is why we canceled the elective surgery. So this is a great question, Kimberly, is that um, uh, people, People were coming in for surgeries, like normal elective surgeries, and they had undiagnosed, undiagnosed COVID-19. So they, they had trouble getting off the vent 
or once they were extubated, suddenly had respiratory distress and we re-extubated them, they re-extubated them yeah. and, and took CAT scan them and showed they had, they had findings of coronavirus. So that's when they shut down elective surgeries. And I knew that from my friends and colleagues in Italy and England. And that's why I predicted it before it happened here in the United States, right? <laughs> why do I? Okay, let me see. Susie, dope. Man, do I have a lot of like Vietnamese fans now? What happened here? How crazy that all your prediction weeks are now happening at pandemic regarding the toll, death, death toll, amazing doc. Thank you, Susie. Well, actually, you know, um, it's getting better. So uh, I'm, I'm slightly off and I'm glad to be off. That means I'm going down. So if I'd been, so, so the trolls and the naysayers were like, you see, you were just a fear mongerer. You were way off. You said you're, there'd be a million deaths by East. I mean, a million cases by Easter and we might only have 600,000. And, and, you know, you were predicting uh, we'd be lucky at a hundred thousand deaths. And now they're saying it's only 60,000 deaths. Well, that's because it worked. The shit worked, man. Like we took care. We took care of ourselves. We did what we were supposed to do. Does that make sense? Now I would have felt like shit if I was wrong the other way. What if I was wrong the other way? What if I was lower than predicted? Then we'd have a problem. So anyway, that basically means that um, what we're doing is working. Thank you. Thank you for the early alerts. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I know I froze a little bit. I was playing around with my buttons. Oh, check this out. Hey, hi from Trinidad and the West Indies. How cool. I told y'all I was world famous. God damn it. Why are all these people like, he's not, he's world famous with 13 books. Yeah, man. Check it out. Trinidad. I did a group counseling call with a patient from um, uh, Tanzania this week. How cool is that? Tanzania. Stop pushing buttons. Heidi, Heidi. Oh, no replacement for me. Where's Heidi? Where'd Heidi go? <laughs> This is fun. I love this. I snorted. Did you hear that? Stop pushing buttons. Don't tell me what to do, Heidi. <laughs> uh, explain if high dose of vitamin D and quinine help COVID-19. No, quinine, hydro, hydroxy uh, quinine, no, does not help. Does not help. Does not help. We don't have any uh, current current uh, treatments. Any idea when we will be able to live events again? I work in concert lighting. Man, I'm, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring... Um, uh, Ran Roddy Chong on uh, is so that he can talk about this. I'm also going to bring on, I haven't connected with him yet, but the stunt man, the stunt man uh, in Albuquerque who does stuff for like Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad and those shows. And he's going to talk about what's happening in the industry for all of the, the support help, which um, I think would be awesome. All right. Look at that. Here we go. See? World famous. Thank you. I have people watching you in Puerto Rico. Thank you, Elizabeth Rose. That's a cute picture too, man. Tell, tell your man he's he's lucky. Um, oh, look at this. Picotin. I understood your explanation of the big sponges. Thank you. That was really helpful. And thank you for sharing that video. Um, thank you for keeping us informed. Thank you, Jeanette, for watching. Hey, here's somebody from Austin. Hey, Ann, did you know part of my residency, I had to train in Austin. So I did trauma there at Brackenridge. Uh, I was there from 2000, well, off and on, because we did rotations there. But I was there uh, every year from 2001, 2002 to 2005, I guess I would say. So, hello from Indiana. I love listening to you show your amazing knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, do I have a single brother? <laughs> You're funny. No, I don't. Hey, from Spring, Texas. Is that near Longview? I grew up in Longview. I know there was Spring, Hugh Springs. No, Spring is up north of Houston. What am I thinking? Yeah, I'm in Houston. Duh. Jerry Wayne. Thank you, man. Hey, Corpus Christi. I love Corpus Christi. I actually did a month. What's that children's hospital there in Corpus Christi? I think it's Driscoll. Driscoll Children's Hospital. I did a month there in med school um, with like four other people from my med school. And it was fun. All right, Iowa. All right. Hey, check this out. Oh, ortho trauma. Thank you. Hold on. I got to get this lady on. There you go, Dana Baldwin Gassaway. I worked with you at Mainland Medical Center. Yeah, that was my first practice. 
And uh, yeah, I was crazy back then, huh, Dana? I was a nice guy, but man, I was so entrepreneurial and I wanted to do all sorts of shit differently. They probably thought like, holy shit, like, you know, what, what did we get ourselves into? But uh, I hope I wasn't too mean and, and I miss you guys. Um, all right. How about the doctor saying to treat COVID-19 like the measles, let everyone get it and get it over with? Uh, no, because the death rate's uh, too high too high um maybe if you're young and healthy that would be worth it but even then what's young and healthy because there are 30 and 40 year olds now dying from it check this out y'all this is kind of sad but we can blame it on janine because she brought it up um <clears throat> there are surgical there are residents who are dying from this so uh, kids literally kids in their 29 30 31 years old doing their residencies and their fellowships in pulmonary critical care or whatever. They hadn't even started. They're still in training. They went through college, med school. They're in their residency and, and might be in their fellowship. And they haven't even started practice. They have a ton of student debt and they're getting paid maybe $50,000 a year to do, a, to do you know, 80, 90, 100 hours a week. And um, they're dying. We, we have training interns and residents who are technically in school still because it's their apprentice, their residency program. They're they're dying from this COVID, and if that fucking doesn't piss you off enough, uh, you know, I mean, every death is important. Don't get me wrong; every life matters. Um, but the amount of time and effort and money and talent that goes into creating a doctor and to have them die before they even get to start their careers, they haven't even started their careers. I can't even begin to talk. It's just, um, it's really painful. It's really painful. Okay. Uh, Jessica Bennett, is there anything we can do to prevent a cytokine storm? No, hun, there's not. Um, you know, there's this really kind of interesting thing and don't, don't fucking blow this out of proportion, but it seems to show there's some sort of correlation, not causation, but correlation where countries that have vaccinations for tuberculosis, because TB is very common, like in Mexico and maybe parts of India and um, places like that, where tuberculosis is more ind indigenous, is more rampant, <laughs> that they're having lower infection rates. So they're looking at that, but that doesn't mean that um, it's gonna help us if you've had tu tuberculosis. We just don't really know. Um, I did a video on cytokine storm, uh, and it kind of covers why some people storm, some people don't. It, uh, has to do with our genome and then our phenotype. All right. Uh, Pat, come on, Pat. I love you, dude. I am morbidly obese, sleep apnea, asthma. Am I doomed if I get this? No, Pat. Look at that beard, man. Nobody with a goatee is gonna get hurt from this, Pat. Just kidding. You're definitely at high risk, Pat. So um, morbid obesity, sleep apnea, asthma. You got three things. Although I might consider sleep apnea and asthma as one thing. So unless you're like over 60 or high blood pressure or something like that, take care of yourself, brother. Like stay isolated, especially stay away from really from sick people. If you're worried at all, call your doctor right away and, um, and, and stay safe, brother. All right. Stay safe. Um, all right. Coo, 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 coo. Let's talk about, there we go. Doc, I had a gastric bypass three years ago. How does this virus affect me? Um, it, if you've lost the weight, which by your picture, it looks like you're totally losing the weight. You're, you're thinner, you're at normal risk, and it really is your comorbidities. The surgery itself has nothing to do with uh, immunity, unless of course, you're one of these really rare uh, or uh, uncommon bypass patients who have issues with malabsorption and like um, vitamins and nutrients and their protein malnourished and stuff like that, or they have low vitamin D or vitamin C or you know low levels uh, of vitamin B. They're just not healthy to begin with. They're not healthy because of their bypasses. If you're not one of those bypass patients and a lot of your comorbidities are resolved, then you're at normal risk. So, uh-oh, I was supposed to have a call with James, huh? See, I started going. Hey, James, sorry, buddy. That's my accountability partner. Did you try calling me? My phone didn't ring. 
Let me see. You did call me. Oh, heck. All right, buddy. Let me get with you here. All right, I'll get you. I, I got to go. My accountability is on watching me. I was supposed to talk to him 15 minutes ago, and I totally, totally didn't get to do it. So I'm testing the stream yard. Let me wrap up here. Uh, one, is the video quality good? Is the audio quality good? Um, I was supposed to bring on my guest. Um, I can't get your comments off. How do I get your comments off? Banners, maybe? No. Let's see. This is supposed to go. Check out. Oh, yeah. Check that out. That was supposed to be going. All right. Totally forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, sorry, Susan. You're going to be stuck with me, I guess. I'm trying to get your... Let me, let me see. <clears throat> Here we go. Here, this is a nice, nice, wholesome family picture right there. Mike Deegan looks good and sounds good. Love it. So um, I'm testing StreamYard because I've been having trouble connecting Zoom to my fan page, and it's pissing me off. So for those of you who are just now watching, I'm going to um, go transition to edutainment. So it's educational. We're going to talk about coronavirus and other stuff, but uh, we're also going to give you some entertainment. So by entertainment, uh, I'm going to have special celebrity guests on with me, which is going to talk about how coronavirus has affected him uh, or her. Um, so for example, who remembers Potsy from Happy Days? Potsy from Happy Days will be joining me on my Facebook fan page uh, to entertain you, tell you what he's up to, tell you how coronavirus affected him, what his life has been like since Happy Days, uh, what it was like to be a childhood star, you know, all fun stuff like that. And then also educate you guys about, you know, how to protect yourself from the coronavirus, etc. We have Walter O'Brien, the world's smartest man. He probably doesn't like being called that, but one of the world's smartest men based, uh, the show Scorpio is based on his life. He was a consultant on it. And um, he's going to be talking to us about what's really happening in the government. Can't talk about government conspiracies too much. Um, and what you can expect when businesses go back to work. That's going to be totally awesome. I have a friend who was an actress on Mad TV and also has a Netflix TV show. Jill Michelle is going to be on with us. Um, Roddy Chong, who's the violinist for Trans Siberian. So um, be prepared for those. And then also, who am I going to, um, who am I missing? Uh, Frank Shankwitz, the founder of Make a Wish Foundation, is going to come on, talk about what he's doing uh, with himself now talk about the found the early days of make a wish foundation and it, he, we just did a new movie about his life will be out it is out it's also on netflix it's called wish man you shall y'all should look up wish man that would be awesome and uh then last but not least uh, well we have a bunch but um i've got uh mickey mouseketeer del Gabaldo is going to come he was on he was a mouseketeer uh, with justin timberlake christina aguilara um um uh, Christina, uh, Christina Aguilara, um, Britney Spears, Kerry Russell, Ryan Gosling. Everyone laughs because you forgot Ryan Gosling was a Musketeer. And uh, he's been in movies. He was in the TV show uh, People vs. O.J. Simpson a couple years ago that won a bunch of Emmys with John Travolta. And the founder of Ugg Boots will come on. And, um, you know, we're just going to talk about how the healthcare. Pro Here we go. Hold on. Yep, well, we're going to have to do that. We definitely have to do that. Thank you, Wishman. Yep, check that out. Uh, hey, L. Swars. Look at that. Great fan, originally from Germany. See, told you I was world famous. All right. Hey, New Orleans, take care of yourself. Darla, take care of yourself, man. Times are tough out there, okay? So be kind, be kind to yourself. All right. All right. Thank you guys very much and uh, stay safe. Happy Easter. Happy Good Friday. Easter coming and uh, be safe. Be kind to each other. All right. Bye, guys.